بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن النظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء صدق الله العظيم Honorable scholars, respected brothers, friends and elders and the esteemed listeners out there there has not been a single situation that has developed or unfolded which I have observed in my limited life but that I found explicit mention, reference, guidance, direction, and navigation from Quran and Sunnah and the text of our pious predecessors. At times when I read the writings of our pious predecessors, I find it has more relevance today than it probably could have at the time in which they articulated it. Let me paint today's scenario of the world in the poetry of Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. He said, and I, I recently I spoke on Imam Ghazali at a particular talk, and again, how aptly he described the scenario. It's like these people were inspired back to give us counsel as we will grapple to move forward in the challenges that we contend with. هلك المداوي والمداوى والذي جلب الدواء وباع ومن اشترى Like Shafi'i was talking of today إن الطبيب بطبه ودوائه لا يستطيع دفاع مقدور القضاء Verily the physician with his skill and expertise cannot tamper with the decree that Allah has ordained. مَا لِلطَّبِيبِ مَا لِلطَّبِيبِ يَمُوتُ بِالدَّاءِ الَّذِي قَدْ كَانَ يُبْرِئُ مِثْلَهُ فِي مَا مَضَى What has happened to the physician? He succumbs to the very medical condition from which he gave deliverance to hundreds of people previously. Halakal mudawi wal mudawa. Halakal mudawi wal mudawa. Walladhi jalabad dawa wa ba'ahu wa manishtarab. Nay, the doctor has fallen. The patient has collapsed. In fact, the manufacturer of the very drug has succumbed to that very condition. Allama Shabir Ahmed Uthmani in Tafsir Uthmani writes one place Admi kabi goli se bachata hai or kankri se marta hai. Sometimes a person survives a bullet wound and dies with a pebble. You survive the bullet wound not because of your resilience and your immunity and how strong you are and how you bounce back and what a fighter you are and our family is known to or is a fighter you bounced back because you were not on the list of malakul mode that day
and you died with a cough because your name was numbered and your days had lapsed. And then, what did Sayyidina Ali radiallahu say? To amilu fi dunya tawilan wa la tadri idha janna laylun hal ta'ishu ila al-fajri fa kam min sahihin mata min ghayri illa wa kam min alilin aasha dahran ila dahri wa kam min fatan yumsi wa yusbihu amina wa qad nusijat akfanuhu wa huwa la yadri you tend to be very ambitious in this transitory abode to ammilu fi dunya tawilan wa la tadri idha janna laylun hal ta'ishu ila al fajri but when night falls you have no clue if you will see the crack of dawn and the flush of dawn now the irony of life the irony of life fa kam min sahihin mata min ghayri illa there are just too many healthy people who are falling without a medical explanation. And there are just too many critically ill people whose death is almost certain, but they outlive in healthy people. What come, like, like Ali, Imam Shafi'i, were you, were you talking of today? What come in Ali وَكَمْ مِنْ عَلِيلٍ عَاشَ دَهْرًا إِلَى دَهْرِ وَكَمْ مِنْ فَتًا يُمْسِي وَيُسْبِحُ آمِنَا وَقَدْ نُسِجَتْ أَكْفَانُهُ وَهُوَ لَا يَدْرِي Many a young man walking around flagrant, flamboyant, arrogant, knowing not the coffin in which he'll be wrapped has been sown and it has arrived in the marketplace already. It has arrived in the marketplace. Sayyidina Ali had to contend with the tragic demise of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was the most catastrophic moment in the annals of human history, which was followed within six months with the demise of the Queen of Jannah, his spouse Fatima radiallahu anha. So he said at the loss of his daughter, Fati, at the loss of his spouse Fatima radiallahu anha, which was six months after Nabi alayhi salam, dunya alayya kathira. I see the trials of this world are really intensifying upon me. And the truth be told, that's the pattern, the rhythm, the nature of life. That you gripped, you overpowered, you overwhelmed by one challenge after another. وَإِنَّ افْتِقَادِي فَاطِمًا بَعْدَ أَحْمَدٍ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا يَدُومَ خَلِيلُ And the fact that I had to bury my Fatima six months after burying my Ahmed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveys a strong message. Nobody is here to ever stay. So there's no doubt we are going through very, very challenging times. But our deen has given us guidance, direction, and navigation in all aspects. That's the beauty and that's the richness. It is upon the people of each time to be blessed by Allah with the realization of the right text of the moment. So Abu Bakr at that critical moment, which Aisha radiallahu anha said, that post the demise of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sara ashabu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ka'annahum mi'za mutira fi ardin musbi'a, that the noble, blessed companions appeared to be like a flock of sheep in a forest infested with predators at the tragic demise of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By Allah, it was my dad who rose to the challenge, rescued the moment, and stabilized the ummah. Allah having inspired his bosom with the verses that were revealed on the campaign of Uhud, when the rumor was circulated about the assassination of the Prophet ﷺ. And many scholars and experts on the exegesis of the Quran tell us, that this rumor happened, but in the greater happenings of times and things, it was almost an advanced preparation 
for the companions for the eventuality of this day. So Abu Bakr was inspired with Wama Muhammadun illa Rasul. Wama Muhammadun illa Rasul. And Muhammad Sassim is a prophet. And the scholars say this adoption of expression is not to drop the status and the position of the Prophet ﷺ, but it is nafyul uluhiyya, is to refute him being Allah. He is not the Almighty. He is a human. He is a mortal. Qad khalat min qablihi rusul He was preceded by the galaxy of prophets. How do we give direction to the Ummah and what's the message from here that was just as a preamble because it's the contemporary issues and we ask Allah to guide us and give us the correct understanding. Uh, I've been saying this year, there are so many lessons we learn. There are two types of precautions we need to adopt. One is the precaution which is necessary, which is essential, which is approved, which is endorsed by Allah. And one is the precaution which is not endorsed by Allah. And may Allah guide us according to the developments of times to adopt that which is in conformity with the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. So prior to the coming of the floods, Allah told Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to build the ark. And hence that was the adoption of means. Inna mubasharat al-asbab al-ma'zoon fiha la yunafi at tawakkul the adoption of means sanctioned by Allah. Allah is telling Nuh, floods will come, and Allah is telling Nuh, build the ark. But when the ark came, when the floods came, then the son of Nuh, out of his own logic, took to some precaution which was not approved by Allah. So the father said, come my son, hop onto this ark. He said, no, I have my own precaution in place. Sa'awi ila jabalin ya'simuni min al ma. I have a hideout. The floods can't come there. I'll be safe. I'll be insulated. I'll be protected. I'll be fortified. Water won't reach there. So the father said, Oh my son, the, the command of Allah is bring Iman and board the ark. When Allah's decision comes, then no zenith of the mountain or no cave will rescue you. And precisely that is what happened. Came the floods of Allah, interrupted the dialogue of father and son. We need to prepare. We all know and understand that life is temporary and transitory. But when we see life being lost around us so swiftly, it obviously gives us a jolt. I was once in Lombok Island doing some relief work amongst the victims of a quake. And as I observed and rotated my gaze around in the distance, I could see nothing but rubble, debris, and ruin. And homes had collapsed and caved. And people were standing outside in anticipation of some aid. And as I tried to respond to the moment, I had a flash of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he said, Man fatathu salatun, if you've missed one salah, it's like you've lost your family and all your belongings. Suddenly, this hadith had a different meaning to me. I'm literally seeing, again, I wasn't experiencing it, but I was observing it. And I could see the extent of the victims of the quake, the gravity of their crisis, and understanding that the Prophet Wasallam's prophetic analogy is free from exaggeration. And he says, if you have missed a single prayer, he likens it to the loss of all your family members and belongings. And I'm seeing hundreds of people around me. And I'm saying, have I realized how grave an offense it is to miss one prayer? We all know and understand life is transitory and short and it will end and it's temporary. But as we've seen how quick and swift it's happening, a doctor told me, he says, you know, I'm dealing with so many people in the crisis and to add salt to injury, how many are succumbing? And in the last minute, doc, I need my phone. I need to delete. My wife mustn't know this. I need to transfer this funds. She mustn't know him. He says, I'm trying to video call the family to allow them a last moment. The man is grappling, gasping for, for oxygen, and he needs to change and last minute delete and edit. 
And hence I often say, if you cannot leave a legacy of virtue, at least delete a trail of evil. And today it's quite difficult with a digital trail. With a digital trail, it's quite difficult. Okay, going forward, what's the message? As believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what they say in English, the quickest way to get back on your feet is to go on your knees. The quickest way to get back on your feet is to go on your knees. A believer's life is a life of reflection, a life of observation, a life of introspection. There's no time to play. Abu Humayd Sa'idi radiallahu anhu said, Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad, when I seen the gruesome assassination of Uthman, I vowed to my Allah for the rest of my life, I will not laugh again, Allah. Too much I have seen to allow myself to still indulge in laughter. It's just too much. The moment is too much around me, my Lord, for me to still, when lives are falling, can I be concerned if wickets are falling? No. A believer's life is a very disciplined life. And that's the quick focus. In English they say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. An undisciplined man is a headache to himself and a heartache to others. Our deen teaches us discipline. There's a verse in the 18th Jews, in the 23rd chapter, verse 67. Allah highlights three evil traits of the polytheists of Makkah. And it's an alert to us to give us direction. Barely half a line, but the write-up on this is phenomenal. So the first evil amongst the many evils of these people was They were proud, they were haughty, they were arrogant. Bihi, in basic Arabic grammar, that is a pronoun, and a pronoun needs to be preceded by a proper noun. So you cannot say he, she, until you don't mention who's the he. I can say Muhammad came and he said this, he said this, he said this. Muhammad, Zubair, Ibrahim came, they said. I cannot commence with they without making mention. So here Allah says they were proud about it without mentioning what the it was. In the verses before, which apparently outwardly does not satisfy the grammatical format. And the scholars explain this and it's beauty, but I want to keep it simple here to amplify the point and impress the message. Is that the reference of the he, the pronoun, is the Kaaba. And the association and the allegiance of the people of Makkah to the Kaaba was so well known that reference to it could be made without explicitly mentioning it. Where is he? Where's Ibrahim? Yeah, he's with him again. Who's him? He's only with one guy back. That same him. So the first evil trait Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about, mustakbirina bihi, that they were proud and haughty and arrogant about their association with the Kaaba, in which Allah makes us understand that it is of great dislike and repugnance to be haughty about anything and more so about your spiritual feet and accomplishments. Mutarif bin Abdullah said, I would prefer spending the night in sleep and not observing the nocturnal prayer, the optional, of course not the fajr, uh, let me qualify my statement, the optional prayer and getting up in the morning regretting, lamenting that I did not engage in optional prayer, then spending the night in optional prayer and getting up in the morning conceited that I'm better than others. And if you toil, you toil for the betterment of yourself. In Bayanul Quran, in Masailu Suluk, it's written under this ayah. This ayah takes out from the root the melody of conceitedness. And it takes out from the root 
the claim of entitlement because I did. If you did, you did for yourself. You know me, if a person paid extra, I'll phone him and thank him, bye. You left your money. Don't impress me. You're only saving yourself from the fire. You're saving yourself from the fire. Me, I slaughtered the animal, and if it wasn't slaughtered according to Shariat, I'll never sell it. Good luck for you, otherwise you feed haram. You, your own flesh is in hell. Why, why are you impressing that on me? I close my shops, good luck. You go in your grave, one of my scholars mentioned the other day very beautifully. It was a very prominent funeral and many people attended. So everybody is, you seen who came, you seen who attended. So he said, I nudged someone. I said, the way you people are talking is like some are joining him in the cover. You seen he was here, they were there. They were, you, you, you seen who came, you seen who, oh, okay. So does it make it different to go down? You go down yourself. فِيهِ قَلْعٌ لِلْعُجْبِ وَدَعْوَ الْإِسْتِحْقَاقِ Take out the claim of entitlement. Hakim al-Ummah rahimahullah's words I quote often and I find it to be a synopsis of religion in its entirety. He said it's mandatory to aspire to become pious. But it's forbidden to assume yourself pious. It's mandatory to endeavor, to toil, to work, to strive. But then to say, I am it, forget about it. Uh, Imam Ghazali said, Ida ra'ayta sagheeran, when you see a lad, then tell yourself, Hadha lam ya'asillaha wa ana asaytuhu, fala shakka annahu khayrun minni. This is a lad, he never disobeyed Allah. He's better than me. Wa ida ra'ayta alib, wa ida ra'ayta kabiran, when you see an adult, then you say, هَذَا عَبَدَ اللَّهَ قَبْلِي فَلَا شَكَّ أَنَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِّنِّي This man is born before me, so he's worshipping Allah before I arrive. Of course he's better than me. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ عَالِمًا When you see a scholar, هَذَا عَلِمَ مَا لَمْ أَعْلَمْ وَبَلَغَ مَا لَمْ أَبْلُغْ فَكَيْفَ أَكُونُ مِثْلَ This man has the whole Quran in his heart, he has hadith in his heart. I'm grappling to memorize one chapter of the Quran. I don't know how to pronounce one hadith. Day I equate myself to him. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ جَاهِلًا And when you see a layman and an ignorant person, you say, هَذَا عَصَى اللَّهَ بِجَهْلٍ وَأَنَا عَصَيْتُ اللَّهَ بِعِلْمٍ فَحُجَّةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيَّ أَكْبَرٍ He doesn't know better. He's ignorant. Probably ignorance will shield him. I knew it all, yet I perpetrated. Day I say I'm better than him. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ كَافِرًا and when you see a disbeliever, then say, Asa أَنْ يُسْلِمَ غَدًا It is highly possible that Allah will give him iman. فَيَكُونُ غَدًا هُوَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ And it is equally possible that Allah can deprive me of iman and I can be amongst the rejected. One pious scholar used to say, I respect everyone more than myself because I assume others sin and I know I sin. He's a human. I guess you must be sinning. I guess you must be. You don't have to uh, say, no, no, they look happy. I don't think this couple has problems in their marriage. No, it's just a real world. Anyway, the first thing, mustakbirin, may Allah save us from pride. The second thing, samir. Samir refers to a moonlit night. So amongst the Arabs, this was a common pastime thing. What was a common pastime? When it was a moonlit night, sit, chill, relax, indulge. The night is young, just enjoy, chat, chat. Allah condemns this. Allah highlights this. This is evil. This is bad. That is destructive to you. To spend your night in, in, in just killing time. There's, just, there's, there's no achievement to this here. When, when uh, Iskandariya was conquered and Sayyidina Umar was resting in the courtyard of Masjid and Nabawi and then the messenger and the envoy came in. So the envoy went to his own place and then when Sayyidina Umar got news and wind, he, uh, he ordered that the envoy must be brought in. So when the envoy came, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu reproached the envoy and he said, we're waiting in anticipation for updates and developments about the battlefield and the Muslims and you come in not to inform me. So he said, I thought it's midday, it's time for siesta, you might be sleeping. So Umar teared and he said, لَإِن نِمْتُ النَّهَارَ ضَيَّعْتُ الرَّعِيَّةِ وَلَإِن نِمْتُ اللَّيْلَ ضَيَّعْتُ نَفْسِي فَكَيْفَ النَّوْمْ بَيْنَ هَذَيْنِ If I sleep by day, then when will I see to the needs of the creation? And if I sleep by night, then when will I talk with Allah? When these two things are on my shoulders, you tell me the time to sleep and I'll put my head on the pillow.
Allah says in the 21st Juz in Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَبْتِغَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِ Amongst the bounties of Allah is that He's given you sleep by night and day and that you earn sustenance. Under this ayah is mentioned in a tafsir, دَلَّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ النَّوْمِ لِلْإِسْتِرَاحَةِ وَكَذَا طَلَبُ الْمَعَاشِ مِنَ الْأَسْبَابِ لَا يُنَافِ الْكَمَالِ فَإِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنْ مِنَنِهِ تَعَالَىٰ كَيْفَ يُنَافِ الْكَمَالِ وَإِنَّمَا يُنْهَا لِإِنْهِمَاكُ فِيهِمَا That when Allah said sleep is a bounty, you cannot prevent someone from sleeping its entirety because Allah said, I've been kind to you, I've given you sleep. And earning sustenance is a bounty. So to cut someone off from the concept in its entirety goes against the grain because Allah is magnifying it as a bounty. Yes. Qualifying the context of the ayah, وَإِنَّمَا يُنْهَا الْإِنْهِمَاكُ فِيهَا But a believer will be alerted to maintain a level of discipline. A level of discipline. If you lose the discipline in your life, you've destroyed yourself before death. You've destroyed yourself before death. Samiran, just to pass time, to kill time, to chit chat. A believer retires to bed early and rises early. The one who sleeps studied the greats of all times. Discipline was a common thread across everyone. The one who sleeps late by night, he cannot be productive by day. You want to put your life in order? Retire to bed early. That's a phenomenal, fundamental principle of Quran and Sunnah. Tahjurun was the third evil. Hujr with the dhamma on the ha refers to nonsense, futile discussion. If you chit chatting and you're having social discussions, inevitably it would lend itself into abusive, into gossip, into non productive discussion. In fact, many scholars used to say that when you have a social get together, don't even speak good of people because the devil will make that a pretext to take you into evil. So you'll say, Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, but. You know what? Never mind. Allah knows. We don't say anything. You know what? There's another side to everyone. Everybody has a dark chapter. He doesn't read out loud in public. So you start off on a positive note and you end off. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah said, Adrakna salaf wa hum la yarawna al-ibadat fi salati wa la fi sawmi wa lakin fi al-kaffi an a'radhi al-nas fa sa'imu al-layl wa qa'imu al-nahar illam yahfad lisanahu aflasa yawm al-qiyamah. I stayed with the pious. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was a great man. Huh? Him, um, Hassan Basri rahimahullah said, Adraktu aqwaman kana ahaduhum ashaha ala awqatihi minkum ala darahimi wa dananir. If I have to sum up the companions in one word, they were a nation more protective over time than assets. You could get any amount of money from them. Hey, don't take my time. Don't take my time. No, 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 hey, my time. Uh, in Urdu they say, Waqt ki waqt me qadar karo. اس لئے کہ وقت کے پاس بھی اتنا وقت نہیں ہے کہ تمہیں دوبارہ وقت دے value time in the time because even time doesn't have more time to give you time again تم نے سال کو بدلتے ہوئے دیکھا ہم نے سال بر لوگوں کو بدلتے ہوئے دیکھا you seen the year turning we seen humans turning throughout the year has not the covered crisis made the mysterious angel knock each one of our door in a different way. And this happened with someone very dear to me and that is why it triggered my mind in this direction. Because the dynamics, the economic uh, landscape has changed drastically. So a brother who I know very well, he said somebody came to me recently like three weeks ago or four weeks ago. And he said, you know, things have been challenging for me and I haven't been on, in a good situation, lost my employment, etc. Uh, I need X amount of money, I need to buy a car, I need to do this. So I said, yeah, okay, I'll let you know, I'll see and I'll get back to you. He said, the man barely left, and then I had a flash. Was this not the angel coming to me and saying, are you not the blind man or the leper or the pauper? And people had cast you away, and then Allah gave you this whole valley here, and this whole fleet of cars, and this whole operation, and I'm asking you only for one to help me out. And have I failed the test or have I passed? He said, I cried. He subsequently phoned me. And then he offered the help to the individual. 
And he said, immediately this hadith dawned upon me. This individual was an angel sent by Allah in his situation to put me back into my own position. In the 22nd juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the tale, the narrative of Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salatu was salam. So Dawood alayhi salam used to make armor, right? وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنْعَةَ لَبُوسٍ لَكُمْ لِتُحْصِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ That uh, we had educated, empowered him, and we had softened the steel for him. So look at the beauty and the depth and the detail of the Qur'an. When Allah inspired him with the skill of making the armor, then Allah said to him that, أَنِعْمَلْ uh, سَابِغَاتٍ and make broad armor, sabigat broad, you know, that can fit people comfortably. Waqaddir fi sardi, waqaddir fi sardi. Qaddara yuqaddiru taqdir in Arabic means to fix, to proportion, to estimate, to calculate. Sarda yasrudu means to weave, to weave. This has been explored in two fronts, and both the deductions have absolute relevance to the occasion. Qadir fi sardi, one interpretation is that when you structure the armor, then measure the links. So let it be proportioned, let it be synchronized, let there be beauty in the external format, which refutes the notion that Islam is averse to professionalism in anything material. I hope somebody is listening to what I'm saying here, because there's this other perception here. No, 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 Islam, you just be happy as it. No, 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 you've lost the plot. You've lost the plot. In fact, the ulama argue and the linguists debate this, that when Allah told Sayyidina Nuh to build the ark, Allah said, anisna'il fulka, and Allah did not say, ij'alil fulka. And they say the difference between the adoption of Sana'a and Ja'ala supports, let the ark be built in a beautiful structured way. The message of deen is build it, but don't attach yourself to it. And not that when you build it, it is not structured correctly. Again, my mind races to another ayah in the 10th Jews in Surah to tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, and this is put in perspective and having the correct understanding. Like I told you about the adoption of means. We need to implore Allah that He must guide and inspire us with the correct understanding. We find in ourselves in situations where the lines are bl blurred. The most intellectual amongst us find themselves to be confused and puzzled. May Allah guide the Ummah direction. But that's the truth. We, we, we like, it's obscured, it's blurred. He says, she says, they say, I don't know. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, where is this Ummah? Listen, you at a four-way stopping. You got to decide because there are people behind you. You, you cannot prolong yourself and indicate right and go left. You're creating confusion. So Allah says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ It's a long verse and probably we've heard the translation, but there's a key point of reflection here. If your spouses, your partners, your children, your family, etc. أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ are more beloved to you than Allah. The scholars say this ayah impresses upon us that mahboobiyat, to love your assets and your family is not a problem. It's intrinsic. To love it more than Allah is problematic. Allah didn't say if you love your wife or you love your children. Allah said if you love anyone more than me, that's the problem. You have to love your wife. That's the part of deen. I love my shop. When wealth came into Medina, Sayyidina Umar said, Oh Allah, I'm not going to be those who say we don't like it. We naturally like it. Give us the ability to use it where you like it. And the scholars say, you can only define what is more beloved at the time of conflict of interest. So if there are two friends, and you attach to both, and they have a harmonious relation, you cannot say, I like A more than B. 
At the time of conflict of entrance between A and B, there's a squabble, there's a feud, there's an argument, there's an altercation. The one with whom you align yourself will dictate who's more beloved to you. When there's conflict of interest between what Allah says and your partner and your spouse and your children and society and the norms of business and the commercial world, now where your allegiance goes, that will dictate what is more beloved. That's the beauty of our deen. We're living on this earth. We have to have attachment within reason and moderation. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Two explanations to this ayah according to one tafsir. Do not omit your share from this world. But don't love it more than Allah. Anyway, قَدِّرْ فِي sardi. So measure the links. Measure it. Do it structured. Second explanation, قَدِّرْ فِي sardi. Fix a time for it. A time to weave. There must be a time in your life. And this is the time on which I do this year. And this is how I discipline. When the youngsters were graduating at the end of the year and they asked me for advice, I generally give them the first thing. I said, put a timetable in your life. A human without a timetable is an animal. A believer without a timetable has no direction. Going for Hajj, what can I do? What advice? Create a timetable in your life. Even if you're on a holiday, it might be real. In Islam, there's legislated concession. There's concession, but not blanket concession. It's legislated. So it is relaxed, but then there also there's parameters. There has to be a timetable for a believer. I sleep at this time, I rise at that time. I, my day is structured like this, my night is structured like this. Qaddir fi sardi. Third quick uh, incident, and then I will conclude, inshallah. Sa'id ibn Amir radiallahu anhu was the governor of Hims. He was, uh, Hims was notorious. It was known as al kuwaifa to Sughra, the small Kufa. Simply because people used to always complain, moan, groan. The governor was never good, etc. People always had issues. Uh, you know, sometimes a community can be in great anticipation of a leader. And when the leader finally comes, unfortunately, they uh, are the first to dishonor that leader. Instead of welcoming, embracing him, the people of Makkah were anticipating a guide. That if we have a guide, we'll be the best of nations. They received not the regular guide or the order, they had the greatest, the paragon, the noblest. Yet, unfortunately, they transgressed and rebelled and revolted against the message of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, this place was known as al Kuwaifa to Sughra, the small Kufa. And our, the governor of the place was Saeed bin Ami. Coming back to the point of discipline in your life. Discipline yourself so others don't have to discipline you. A believer's life is a life of discipline. You're looking around you, you have to be learning. You have to be learning, right? The ulama say there are four types of reflection. Musahabat. Mu'akhat, muhasaba, and wa'ad bil ghayr. Musahabat is the adoption of the company of the pious, where you stay in the company, but today you have to qualify every statement because things are taken out of context. You adopt it with the right thing for the right duration, for the transmission of the necessary energy to come in you. You put two cars together and the car is not start. No, you have to connect the cables and you have to rev there a little bit here and you have to keep your engine running. Then maybe the battery will start. And if the cell is dead, even after that it's not going to work. You need to change your battery. So sheer association without a follow-up program in a context is not going to necessarily result in the transmission of the spirituality. But nonetheless, that is one of the things, musahaba. The second is muakhat. Muakhat is brotherhood. The pious had the system that what they used to do is because humans, uh, we cannot see our own folly, right? We cannot see our own folly. You know what? Excuse the, the phrase. You can go to the loo and you can pass feces, you can defecate, and you're never offended by the stench of your own feces. You never heard of a person needed to spray while he's in the loo. You know what? If he's sensitive to others, maybe he'll do it when he leaves. Yet, if somebody else needs to pass wind, like ah, cross ventilation, brothers, ah, ah, some brothers are loud and proud, others are silent and violent. Suddenly, you take more offense to the flatulence of another than you pass in feces. We are super tolerant with our own mistakes. And we lack basic tolerance with the mistakes of others, if we can use it as a context. 
So they used to have the system of mu'akhat. Mu'akhat was where they used to pay up. One tell the other, listen, I'm your brother, you're my brother. We talk frankly, openly, candidly. I'm going to tell you, listen, yesterday I watched you with your gardener. That was raw of you, brother. That was rude. I watched you how you spoke to him. Now, honestly, he's desperate for the job. Like one of my teachers used to say, some are dignified and others are desperate. So neither of the two speak, but both are watching. He said, now why must I get myself in him? It's his life. He walked away. The other one is, if I talk, my, life, my work is on jeopardy. So I keep quiet. But that doesn't mean he didn't observe where you went, what you did, or what you, your operation is. He dropped his gaze and he walked away. But he also got lenses and he's also watching. He's also watching. So they would then enter into a relation, mu'akhat, and then say, frankly, you must tell me and I tell you. And we don't take offense because the aim is to reform. Can you imagine these people, how passionate they were? Huh? A person came to Hakimul Ummah rahimahullah and he said that uh, I need to apologize to you, I've been backbiting about you. So he said, I accept your apology provided you disclose what you were backbiting. Because it's a crime for you to backbite, but I could well be guilty of it. So if you don't tell me, then how will I reform myself? So it doesn't make it right for you to say, but I could be having the mistake within me. Now you're desperate for forgiveness. And I'm desperate for reformation. So I'll forgive you, but disclose what my mistake is. Okay, we're going to, it's going to get up a long year. So that's the second thing here. Right? Only two chapters of the Quran begin with wail. Suratani fil Quran, bada'at bil wail. Ihdahuma fi amwalin nas, wal ukhra fi a'radin nas. Wailul lil mutaffifin, wailul li kulli humazatil lumazal. So that was mu'akhat. The third is muhasaba. Every night you go and sleep and you ask yourself, hey man, he passed away, she passed away, they passed away. Last week this, this happened. Am I, am I on the right lane? Am I on the right lane? Is my life in order? Is this right? Do an audit on yourself. Is my ducks in a row? Is everything sorted? Is everything clean? Am I happy if, if this happens? Riyah Qaisi said, I did an audit on myself and I seen li nifu wa arba'una dhamba. I had 40 odd sins. Then I asked Allah forgiveness 100,000 times for every sin. Do an audit on yourself, and I do an audit, and I can conservatively say my follies and mistakes will be more than 100,000. And I haven't asked Allah forgiveness 40 times for one. And He's asked Allah 100,000 times for each one. And the last out of the four through which reformation can happen is Wa'ad bil Ghair. Wa'ad bil Ghair. Wa'ad bil Ghair is where you observe the happenings and you respond. What they say, a graveyard is a silent place with a loud message. A silent place with a loud message. A plaque at one graveyard. Inside here we have many people who thought the world cannot function without them. If any, the world is doing better. You think it's going to stop when I collapse? No, 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 not at all. Anyway, the other incident will take up too much time. I'll end on this note here. We need to introspect. We need to change the direction. The quickest way to get onto our feet is to get onto our knees. I'll leave you with this thought that came to my mind, that the three people were stuck in the cave, and we know about it. Today, the world is stuck in a cave. And the boulder of Corona has blocked it. When these three people were stuck, then they said, hey folks, listen here, nothing is going to work here unless each one of you can tap into your spiritual reserve and see what you can offer to Allah to move. But the outward, the apparent, the obvious is not going to work here. <laughs> Nothing's going to get you out of here, but that each one of you implores Allah. Can you imagine how rich these travelers were? We travel with wallets and purses, with credit and debit cards, with numbers and contacts. But when we're in a crisis like this, not one out of the 20 members can say, wait, hang on, I got a personal secret with my Allah, I'll rescue you all. That's how empty and shallow our richness is. No, no, I got a card here. I got this here. Uh, 
I can flash this. I got a contact. Suddenly the network is not working. Suddenly the machine is down. The interactive machine won't allow for your card to be swiped. I don't know, and everything is just falling, one after the other. Huh? Falling, falling, falling. It's time we have secrets with Allah. It's time we have secrets with Allah. It's time our voice is familiar there with Allah. When Sayyidina Yunus was swallowed by the fish, and then uh, he called out to Allah in layers of darkness. Fanada fi Allah ilaha illa anta subhanak. And so Allah asked the angels, you know who is this? So the angel said, we know the voice, but the location is unknown. So to ma'roof min biladin gharibah. Ibn Rajab Hanbali speaks about this. So Allah said, this is my servant Yunus alayhi salam. They said, the Prophet Yunus? Allah said, yes. The malaika petitioned. I'm paraphrasing. And they said, Allah, accept our plea on behalf of the servant of yours, Allah. We intercede. We hear his prayer daily, Allah. We familiar with him, Allah. Accept our request on his behalf and give him shelter. فَنَبَذْنَاهُ بِالْعَرَاءِ فَنَبَذْنَاهُ بِالْعَرَاءِ We then cast him on the naked shore. وَأَنبَتْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِّنْ يَقْطِينَ and we caused the calabash tree to grow to give him shelter. Historical narrations say a goat would come, he would milk it and drink the milk of that goat. He gained his strength, he was replenished, he was uh, recovered, and then he went back and Allah gave him a new leaf to life. When we are in crisis, our names are known to the legal team and we need decent contacts. I'm not refuting that to the medical fraternity, but when all fails, is our voices known by the malaika? Is it known there? Huh? What they say? Mushkil mein Allah ko yaad rakhna mushkil nahi hai. Asal mushkil hai asani mein use yaad rakhna. It's not difficult to remember Allah in difficulty, but it's really difficult to remember Allah in ease. So, what did the first one intervene? Through sadaqah. The second one, through kindness and stepping away from immorality. And the third one, to be kind to his employee. I crafted a tweet in the early days of the lockdown in which I spoke about the two drastic playouts of economic situations that the virus brought to the world. Some really went through difficult times and may Allah make it easy for them. But others, on a different note, witness exponential growth. Exponential growth. And I personally interacted with each one of them. And every one of them shared one common secret amongst others. We vowed to Allah, regardless of how tough the times are, our employees will receive their full salary and perks. And he said... I, I had calls from, from different parts of the world. He said, I made this vow to Allah and I see divine intervention. I leave you with this message, my brother. People say, you know, lucky I got a doctor, in the, a family doctor. Lucky my brother's a pharmacist. Lucky my neighbor's a paramedic. Lucky I'm on this medical plan. Wallah, the ummah doesn't know how lucky we are that we have sadaqah. We have something called sadaqah. We have something called sadaqah. By Allah in whose control is my life. This amal is magic. Some actions have their benefit when performed by a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Charity is one of it. Kindness to parents is one of it. Speak to Thomas and Peter and John. Or speak to Ibrahim or Yusuf and Qasim. The one who sees to his parents, Allah sees to him. Of course, in Akhirah, without Iman, there will be no dividends. There will be no benefit in Akhirah. But in this world, even the disbeliever who's kind to his parents sees growth in his life. Charity. Speak to the Muslim or the non-Muslim. The one who gives charity. You will be amazed at how Allah will protect you. There will be a drought around you and Allah will send a cloud to send rain on you.
بينما رجل يمشي في فلات in the hadith of Sahih Muslim a person who's walking in a waterless land and then he looks up hadith of Sahih Muslim isqi hadiqata fulan let the rain come down on this person so I walked and I followed and I seen an orchard and I seen a man he had a shovel and the rain was coming and he was distributing the water and around it's dry and a cloud is coming read the hadith of Sahih Muslim I came to the brother I said brother your name he said but why he said no I'm walking and I heard a name from the cloud I just want to ask is this you so he mentioned his name he said yeah that's my name okay now what's the secret for you to have a cloud It's waterless It's drought There's fair mine and you have in your own cloud you have in your own cloud well you know what whenever my produce comes out then before me and my family eat the poor eat first when khandak took place when khandak took place Nabi Sassam told Huzaifa go and get the information on the opposite camp the narration of Bidaya he said I stood up the Prophet of Allah made dua for me it was so cold that the companions were going down in the ground and covering themselves to draw warmth from the earth no sooner I complied I felt like I was walking in a hot shower so I carefully cautiously advocate the importance of the adoption of means and precaution the ulama say to abandon means is disobedience and to rely on means is disbelief so this is my message the adoptions of means is necessary reliance on Allah is mandatory and despondency is devilish let us give hope to people comfort people increase in charity someone said in the Urdu language Sadqa usi ki musibat dur karta hai jise sadqa dena musibat na lage Sadqa only diverts the tragedies from the life of that person who don't consider charity a tragedy Oh they have to give again or oh, they have to spend again the one who doesn't consider it a tragedy and he gives it happily and wholeheartedly you phone me and tell me the magic you will see in your life we pay tribute and homage to all our workers on the ground who are helping who are responding in each way may allah help us to be the means of extinguishing this guttering fire and may we not add a match to these burning flames wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in alhamdulillahirabbil alamin